Hi guys, my name is Max. I wanted to demonstrate for you guys just how easy it is to deploy Flask applications to Heroku uh, for your users and your, for your customers to access publicly. Um, the first two things that we'll need are two Flask, excuse me, two Python dependencies, uh, Flask and Unicorn. So you can go ahead and pip install them. I already have them installed. Uh, the next three things that we need are our actual Flask application. Um, We'll make a really basic one. We'll have a single endpoint, which will be our, just our an index endpoint, which will just return OK. And if this is the file that's getting ran, then we will run our Flask app. Uh, so we have one of the three things that we need. The second of three things that we need is a list of our actual Python dependencies. So pip freeze shows us what Python packages we have installed, and those are pretty much exactly the dependencies that we want to be installed when we go to deploy our Flask application on Heroku. So that's two of three things. The last thing we need is what's called a proc file. Uh, I won't go too in depth to what is contained in the proc file, but basically you name one process per line that you want ran on Heroku. In our case, we want to run our Flask application. We'll use Gunicorn to do this. Gunicorn is a way of doing uh, parallel or, excuse me, concurrent processing. So your Flask application can handle a great deal of concurrent requests to your web app. Uh, so those are our three things. Let's give a shot to make sure that our application works. We can go ahead and access it locally on port 5000. Um, awesome, it works. So. With our three things uh, there, we need to go ahead and make an application on Heroku. Assuming you have an account, you can go ahead and name it a application. We'll create the app. Uh, and they have some good details about how to deploy. You'll need the command line interface installed, uh, which is easily accessible on whatever operating system you use. Assuming you have downloaded the command line tool, you need to authenticate your tool. Uh, which I've already done. You can change directory into your application, run Heroku Create. In our case, we already have our app, so we need to initialize this as a Git repository. The second thing we'll have to do is um, add Heroku's servers as a remote for a Git repository so that we're able to call Git push Heroku uh, and push our code to Heroku. Um, so now if we list where we can push to, we can push to Heroku. You can see that we obviously haven't um, uh, committed any of our files yet. So in order for us to commit files and have those be pushed and deployed on Heroku, we need to add them and make a first commit. Um, but given that, we should be good to git push Heroku master. So you might be wondering, at what point did we specify to Heroku what type of web application we have? Um, and how do our dependencies get installed on the uh, Heroku servers? Well, you can see that Heroku goes through a list of different uh, build packs, they call them, uh, that they support and they detect what type of application it is that you are pushing. In our case, we're obviously pushing a Python one, and the reason why it's obvious is because it, they, Heroku, have detected that we're in, we have a requirements.txt file. And so they go ahead and pip install all of our dependencies and compile that into what is called a slug. Uh, and that is an image file that they can copy to their app servers uh, and have those run the, con the contents of our proc file. So now if we go to the given URL that they gave us, awesome. Awesome. Well, hope you subscribe. I uh, hope you watch some more videos, and I hope you got something out of it. Take care.